the Step Pyramid is one of the very first large scale stone cut constructions ever created by man. And it symbolizes things to come, not just for the Egyptians, but also for humanity as a whole. You can tell I'm feeling a bit better today, can't you? You like that? <laughs> So yeah, I like the Pyramids of Giza. I think they're, you know, super impressive. But for me, this is actually kind of more interesting because it's the original and it's the transition from mud brick construction to stone cutting. Um, and so it's hugely important. And it also shows, um, it demonstrates a sort of a new wealth that Egypt has and an ability um, to coordinate power and coordinate people in a way that's never been done before. So in some respects, I consider this to be more important than the pyramids of Giza. This is the zenith. This is society coming together to do something together. It's incredible. So we're northwest of what would have been the city of Memphis back in the day. And this six tier structure um, was built in the 27th century BC. Um, so during the uh, third dynasty for the burial of King Djoser. And that makes this the earliest stone colossal structure ever built in Egypt. Such a structure was far more labor intensive than the mud brick structures that had preceded it. And that sort of demonstrates that Egypt as a nation had a new, um, had new power in terms of managing resources, um, you know, both material and human. So I've come up here to sort of kind of try and get a bit of a bird's eye view. So we have the pyramid and then we have an enormous courtyard next to it. And it's surrounded by uh, ceremonial structures and decorations. And its architect was Imenhotep. Um, and he was born um, from quite humble origins. Um, and he became the chancellor of the Pharaoh and also the high priest. Although this is Joseph's pyramid, um, a lot of people think that really the brains behind the operation were, was actually Imenhotep. And it ended up, once time it was complete, being, as I mentioned, the largest structure on earth at the time. And that sort of just reinforced um, Joseph's status um, as a sort of a living God. Um, and you can, even now, you know, you look up at it and it's just enormously impressive. Like it's, it's monumental, it's huge. Uh, maybe you should get a picture of me over there. there. I'll run over <laughs> and then you can see how big it is. <laughs> And I'm about six foot six, so you can see, relative to my size, how big it is. He's five six. I'm not five six. <laughs> I can't believe you could say that. I'm five ten. He's five ten. I'm five ten. In a little bit. <laughs> no, I, I'm the I'm the better side of five foot. <laughs> On a good day. <laughs> no, I'm six foot six. So, yeah, you get an impression of how big it is there. Um, and it's good because he reigns long enough to actually create this grandiose uh, vision, actually get it built during his reign. And I think, you know, there's always some risk that had he died beforehand, you know, it wouldn't have been, um, you know, it wouldn't have been as grand and perhaps we wouldn't have as many levels. Um, and also, you know, it's the first example of a sort of a pyramidal structure. Um, it kicked off the pyramid age, this. Um, again, so it's, it's interesting how these little things can influence history. The burial chamber, which we're going to go see in a little moment inside, was originally made of alabaster. In the ceiling were um, five pointed stars. That sort of kicked off a tradition. And if you cast your minds back to some of the tombs that we saw, like Seti the First, I think those little stars that are painted on the ceiling are kind of like a continuation of that. And that was because the king sought to associate himself with the eternal North Stars, which never set. I'm outside now, um, the north side of the temple, and this is actually the original entrance to the temple. I believe that's again because we're facing, you know, towards the North Star. All these things are symbolic. And this is rather special as well. So we get a little image of him now in here. And this is purposely designed, as you can see, it's like a sloping rock. So it's like a sloping rock here. And you'll notice that it's sort of pointing. It's pointing towards the stars. And that was because he was essentially facing the North Star, facing the eternal star, because he is eternal. Now I've put you in the hole and we should see. Oh, there we go. Spooky. Let me try the other one. 
Can you see him in there? There's a little uh, window here. Anyway, he is in there. Spookily, look spookily the looking back at you. It's really windy today. Yeah, I'm not complaining about the weather. This is really nice. Is really <laughs> but we still got our hats on and our sun cream because we've been in days like this before and got an absolutely nailed, even though it's overcast. No, thank you. No, thank you. Ashukran, no thank you. No thank you. It's okay, no thank you. Thank you. Pretty standard procedure that. No thank you, no thank you. Bloody hell mate. If I get really annoyed I go. Halas! That means enough in Arabic. Yeah, I, I find they actually get quite annoyed when you do that. Yeah. Side entrance I guess. Hmm. Do you ever feel like a plastic bag? Throwing in the wind, is that it? Drifting through the drifting, wind. Drifting through the wind. Drifting round the, the temple, wind. around the pyramid of Joza. All <laughs> the time, shop? I don't know, it's that like that a gun, gun shop? shop? Oh, yeah. yeah. All the time. Ah, I'm getting stuff in my eyes now. Ooh. Sands, is there a sandstorm coming? I don't know. It's getting misty. Right, come on, shall we continue with the history? Are you going to be all right today going in this one, eh? I hope so. You're a bit scared a bit yesterday, nervous. aren't you? No, thank you. I don't no, need a scarf. I'm fine, thank you. I'm good, thanks. It's suddenly very windy. Let's go inside. Let's go inside. So we can go down into it now. Go down into the belly of the beast. Oh, right, right so. Oh, I see. This is fancy. We obviously weren't very tall back in the day. Are you feeling alright today? This isn't too much. This is better. Yeah? This is nice. I could live in here. You could live in here. Yeah. And this is a wonderfully rare moment uh, in Egypt within any of these tombs. Um, there's no one in here except me and Amy. It's windy outside, as you've just seen, um, but it is absolutely silent in here. It's incredible. Um, you almost want to whisper, it actually feels again like a tomb. And one thing that's awesome about this place as well is that there are a labyrinth um, of passages underneath it, six kilometers of, passenger, of passages. Um, I don't think any of them are open to the public, but it really just teases you because you can see entrances to them, one there, one there, one there, all below this central shaft. And you may be wondering, like, what were these shafts for? Well, this central shaft, which is seven meters um, by 28 meters, so it's 28 meters uh, down on all these passageways, etc., um, were room for the burial um, of family members of the king, um, but also for storage of goods uh, and offerings. And the sides of the underground passages are limestone inlaid with blue fiances of tiles, um, and they were to replicate reed matting. And the, the idea was that these were sort of palace facades. Um, this was his palace after he was dead. A pyramid was not just a grave in ancient Egypt, it was a place to facilitate um, a successful afterlife for the pharaoh. And so that's why it's such a complex structure with all these different chambers and that's why um, its structure below mimics the structure of the royal palace uh, and also why you'll see on the um, reliefs on the walls um, you know, symbols of rituals that he would have carried out during his living life. It's all part of this idea that death isn't final, but death is part of the next journey for the pharaoh. Just to give you a tiny bit more information about the burial chamber, is that it was a vault that was sealed by a three and a half ton block, but it wasn't sufficient because the mummy was never recovered. And in fact, this pyramid was extensively robbed, um, which is quite unfortunate because it would have been great to see 
um, you know, the specific items that he was buried with. I have seen online that he was buried with 40,000 vessels. Um, I assume they're just sort of like pots and whatnot. Um, again, they were just, they were there so that they might be, you know, of some use to him, you know, during the next life. So now we're going into Una's uh, um, tomb. This is not anything to do with our friend Joseph, but another thing to see. Amy, you all right? Yeah. Uh, not as big. You're not, uh, no, you're all right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think it's just here. Keep going. I love that it's just basically a pile of rocks outside. <laughs> Look at that. It's got a stone as well. I tell you, it's the oldest form of writing. In Alpha here, this is called Oriflu. No here. This is original. This is original. Alpha here, this is the stars. I'm going to look here, what is the sarcophage? You can punch your head. I got told off by Amy. I said there is a bit where you have to squeeze through in your stomach. And I don't think the lady was very impressed. I saw the panic on her face. <laughs> Oh, it was a joke. I don't think. <laughs> okay, well, realize. let's get back to Joza yeah. and I'll stop trying to kill Taurus. It is quite amazing that it's literally just a pile of rocks I and mean, we were just underneath all that. You wouldn't think there's a chamber in there. Mm. Just looks like a bit of old dusty rocks, doesn't it? I wonder how many tombs we walked past in uh, Jordan that like, like oh, that. Man, <laughs> so Joza's pyramid complex is surrounded by a trench dug into the underlying rock. Um, and it's 750 meters long, and I believe it's where they quarried the rock for the um, for the pyramid. So I'm trying to find it. Um, you'd think it would be hard to miss. When they first started with this stonework, remember it's the first time they'd used limestone. Um, you can see the way that they made it into these bunches. Well, this is actually meant to represent reeds. So the royal palace would have been constructed out of it. Would have had columns of these reeds, kind of bunched together. And so when they were coming up with the design for this thing. They kind of mimicked the construction processes that you would use for wood. Does that make sense? I think that's a bit confused, but you get the idea. This is the only one I'm aware of, but there are multiple examples of this across um, the complex um, where you can start of seeing these kind of wood-like um, elements. This gentleman's very kindly offered to help us. He's saying there's 20 tombs here. We've only seen two of them. He's like, you've got the ticket, see all the tombs. Why haven't you seen all the tombs? <laughs> we were like, we do. This is, uh, this is the King of Joseph. You have 60 mastabas. Yeah, but this one we know very well. We know this one. You have only 110 pyramids. Yeah. This is first one. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 We, we got that bit. <laughs> He's also said the trench is closed. Yeah, the well. trench is closed, unfortunately. It's amazing. He says there's like 20 tombs here and we're like, where's the trench? <laughs> He's like, the trench? <laughs> like, yeah, I want to see the trench. <laughs> this is the thing going on, you have to reach your bed. Two boys, one girl. You already see that? No. <laughs> <laughs> Careful. Whoa. You see this 30 meter deep? Mm -hmm. You see big sarcophage inside? Mm -hmm. This is for the mummy, for the wife, for the king on us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, this is granite. Granite, yeah. yeah. You can feed the boot for the luxury from Aswan. Yeah. The boot from yeah. Saqqara from We went to Aswan. Yeah. <laughs> the same as the, pyra the small pyramid. Yeah, so that's um, come from Aswan. I'm loving this. This is like rapid tour. Take, I should take a few uh, tips off this guy. <laughs> Three children. Strong rock. <laughs> Three children. Red rock. Wife. I don't do questions. <laughs> And there you can see the bent pyramid right in the distance. It feels like we get an exclusive access here, but I think people just don't know this is around the corner. See from here? Yeah, yeah. Ah, all the all the uh... Maya. Yeah, keep going. 
Alan, the food. The food, yeah. Wow. She's hungry. <laughs> She's hungry. <laughs> She's got a lot of food. You like that? <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, he's hungry too. <laughs> okay, Amy. What's this? Colour inside. Oh, really? It's beautiful. Exclusive tour. Thank you, sir. Don't crave it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Wow. It's a lot of Belugas in here. Wow. It's amazing. I'm experiencing what everyone else experiences when they go to Egypt now. But I know what I'm looking at. So this is not a pharaoh. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, this is not a pharaoh. This is uh important person and here again we have the what was it again the plant that these are going to papyrus that's it yeah. wow it's sand it's, the floor is sand wow yeah. amazing huh. should we have a look no, no, no. Oh, this one's open. Hmm. I was expecting something to jump out. <laughs> wow, cool. Very cool. What's in this one? Very cool. Very cool. I like that they're protecting them with the little wooden things. Mm. It's good, isn't it? This is awesome, though. The taxi driver just warned us about a sandstorm. That's why this is for the boat. Ah. Yeah. Oh, that's what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yesterday, at same at Giza. Yes. Ah, so that's for the boat. Um, and there are also three boats and uh, one of them that was found buried around here called the Khufu ship is actually in remarkable condition. This is Oryx. This is Springbok. This is some kind of goat, I think. And then this is the wolf capturing him. It's interesting because you can see that they're African animals, can't you? And there's a hare up here as well. I don't know what this thing is. It's a, can it's a kangaroo, mate. <laughs> I'm gonna put the lights on in the, in the uh, tomb. And this is original. <laughs> <laughs> you like that? I like the lighting. Oh, wow. That is amazing. Bro's been working out. Look at Got pecs, got abs. Look, he's carrying something. Is that like carrying the king, maybe? I can't believe how intricate his belts are. Yeah. I can't believe how intricate the belts are and stuff. Do you reckon this is all original paintwork? Wow. Oh, look, the boats. Offerings to the gods. Including a cow's head. Mm. Wow. Do you know, after all this walking around Egypt and stuff, I think I'd like that to be buried in a tomb like this. Don't you think? Yeah, you can build a big one for me, Amy. Oh, and that can be your little side entrance for <laughs> when you die, you can sit next to me. <laughs> Temple of Mehu. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. There's just so many of these tombs. Just everywhere. Egypt's just full of them. Each of them has its own brilliance. I mean, this one, look at this. You can see the boats here in such fine detail. 
just gives you such a glimpse into what their lives were like and what, how, they, how they operated. For example, in this particular scene, you learn so much about, you know, for example, the rigging. If someone wanted to learn about how they actually sailed these boats, you can see the actual ropes and the structure of the frame. So each of them has its own marvels. And a skylight. This one has a skylight. <laughs> Is there more? There's more. There's more. It is amazing, like, exploring these tombs, you know, especially when you get these little moments where it's going around. You just get a moment to look at these scenes closely, and you see the movement in a calf, or, you know, the tilt of a head. Suddenly, you see so much movement in them and they become alive. I didn't, you wouldn't think that something that's 5,000 years old could be so preserved, mm -hmm. that you would be able to walk up to a wall and see the tiny scratches on a piece of rope. You see what I'm saying? Or like each piece of hair. It is just weird to think some bloke cut this 5,000 years ago. He stood right here. Can't yeah, you can't comprehend it, can you? He stood right here at this stool. Imagine how hot. Not that stuff. I can't imagine what his working day would have been like. Comes here, does some carving, goes out, have his bread and beer. Weird. It's a nice, I love this one. It's a fishing scene. Mm. Look at all the, look at all the fish. See was Each one of the, yeah, it was abundant. I don't know, I, I doubt it was that abundant. <laughs> what is that? Is that a crocodile? I think that's the, um, Lotus in the water. Hippo. Is that the same? No, crocodile. Different. I guess a crocodile in a hippo's mouth. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Oh, it's got a star in hippos. Yeah. Oh, it's like a catfish. It's a catfish, I think. <laughs> it is amazing, isn't it? Look at this. It's kind of... It's Oh, wow. Monkey in the camel. Why is he naked? <laughs> <laughs> You're wearing it the wrong way, mate. You're wearing it the wrong way, mate. Egypt, old pharaoh, tomb, amazing. Pretty much. <laughs>